February of, of 1939. Uh, so he had his affairs taken care of here with his mother. He finally gets on board ship, and of course, as I say, there's always a performance involved. So here we see him doing a handstand on a lifeboat on deck. Uh, this is a great picture. Uh, this is him here. This is a circus performer from Paris named, uh, I only know his first name is Rene, and the young lady is a ballet dancer from Germany named Katja Sterner. And I actually tried to find some information out on her, but I, I couldn't find anything. It, it's quite possible she perished during the war. Uh, but he, he, got, he got into the whole lifestyle of being a Parisian. I love this picture of him on the uh, Pont de la Tournelle with Notre Dame in the back. This bicycle that he has here, I still ride that bicycle. Uh, and then, this was the funniest thing I found, was his bike license. He had to have a bike license. And it was like a thousand francs, which was probably what, a dollar? I don't know. Uh, but there was very little art that came out of he was. He was going there to look at things. He was going there to experience museums, experience great art, which is the main reason that I think the Challenger people wanted the students to go there. Um, but I did find this, which I find, the thing is, I, I'm keeping it. <laughs> it's a little drawing. It's probably this big. And it says, girl eating at a window in script in pencil. And then France, 1939. But I think it's so great because the composition is so elegant. The light again, it captures light looking in through this window. Uh, just the figuring of, of her at the table and he's just terrific. So he uh, he really enjoyed himself with a little bit of time that he was there. The two years actually turned into about three months. Yes, Can I say something about that? Because um, I can't draw a bit, but I love photography. So I think that's a very bold decision to put the frame of the window, that line across, yep. right there, because normally a photographer would try to avoid anything like that. Right. And uh, But it's also perfectly placed. It's not smack in the middle. It's that right. two, almost two thirds down, yep. that photographer ratio. Right. Pay attention to that ratio. Anyway, I just love that. Yeah, it's, it's a great little, you know, I mean, I didn't know he was a voyeur. Anyway. <laughs> 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 <And he, laughs> yeah, we're in France, right? Yeah. So the word finally comes down that uh, war is imminent and uh, it is finally declared. And he, he and uh, some of his fellow artists from Heron are in Europe at the time. One of them was Harry Davis, who did a lot of pictures of famous buildings in, in uh, Indianapolis, which are quite popular today. Uh, the other one was George Prout, uh, who had won the Millican Prize and was there in France uh, as well. And uh, so there's a, they get word from the embassy and the consul, you know, you've got to get out of here, otherwise we're not going to be responsible. Things are, the, the enemy is coming in. Uh, and I remember a, a story that my dad told me about going to the Louvre uh, one day, and he said he walked in and all the art was gone. Mm -hmm. The French had already overnight basically taken everything out, taken them to the uh, sewers and hidden them in, in uh, the countryside uh, to avoid getting them plundered. Uh, he went over on the Champlain. It was a great French liner. Champlain, luxury liner. Uh, he finally got passage on a banana boat <laughs> uh, called the Fort Response. And it was literally a boat that traveled from South America to La Harbe and back. And it, that was what it did. That was its, its whole, whole mission. Um, he made this comment in a letter to my grandmother. He says, the city has lost its gaiety. The men are headed off to the Maginot Line. The Maginot Line being the defense line that was built after World War I that failed horribly. And uh, 
So they ship their clothes, all their large items home, they get on their bicycles, and they ride for La Harve. And they finally ride for La Harve. George got a passage right away. My dad had to sit around for a couple days, but he finally got on board in response, and they had to sit for a couple days before they got underway. But I thought this picture was incredible that he took. You can see the dirt revetments that have been built now in the harbor. And this is a World War I monument, a beautiful Art Deco monument by Pierre-Marie Poisson. And uh, I, I, just, I thought this was like, wow, this is going to happen again. It hasn't been that many years. We're back in the war. You know, but there was a reality, and he had to get out. So uh, these are neat pictures here. Always sketching on board the response. Always sketching, doing something. He's probably doing a circus sketch there, most likely. Here's a lifeboat drill. Uh, they finally make it back. He gets back around October 2nd, 1939, back in New York State. So, what to do with the rest of the Challenger Prize time and, and money? So, he writes to the Challenger Committee and says, How about I go study the murals of Diego? So they wear out four sets of tires during the trip because <laughs> the roads were horrible. And he comes back and goes back to New York City. And from New York City, he enters the Navy. So he enters the Navy because he decided, you know, I don't want to get drafted, so I'm going to go ahead and, you know, enlist. He goes to uh, Ohio State University, Oxford Kennedy School, comes out of uh, Jake Tail Henson. Uh, and first at stationed at, at uh, Norfolk, where he taught uh, aircraft and vessel identification. And we've I found several sketches that he did of Reese showing the difference between a German vessel and a Japanese vessel because the superstructure is higher on the Japanese. Anyway, pretty cool. Uh, once he leaves, he decides I gotta get into this thing. So he has a friend that says, hey, you should, you know, get in this BH-3 squad. It's an air sea rescue squad. And they're going to they're gonna be in this big campaign going to the Ricky Islands, which is in the uh, China Sea. Uh, they were, the Ricky Islands were very important because uh, Saipan was in that whole chain. It's the Marianas chain. Saipan was in that. And, uh, one of the other islands was Tinian, and probably some of you know Tinian was very important because that's where they launched the bomb. They had a bomb flights from, so he's involved in some of the operations. But so as an artist, he 
designs this one insignia. <laughs> there it is. And uh, I found one on eBay. Some guy decided to uh, replicate them, so I found one. <laughs> so I, I think my dad designed it. You know, what are you doing? <laughs> but he designs insignia. He gets to Alameda Naval Air Station for his training. Admiral in charge of Alameda and said, hey, could you come over and do some murals in the new uh, BOQ, National Armed Officers, uh, B, yeah, BOQ, National Armed Officers Quarters. And he goes, oh yeah, sure. So we're, here he is, we're going to murals. Uh, he spent uh, three months doing these murals and they still exist. Mm -hmm. They still exist. The, a guy bought them out of the, uh, when the Alameda Air Station closed down several years ago, they sold out a lot of stuff. And this guy finds and I've been in touch with him. Well, wow. <laughs> we should do something for this. Anyway, uh, so there's still his net. But he did get in the action. Here he is with his, his squadron. That's him with the arrow pointing down, the guy in the back with the crazy hat on. Uh, and this gentleman right here kneeling is Commander William Buck Bilian. He was his uh, commanding officer. And two summers ago, I get a uh, an email from a Montpelier, it's his son, who contacted me and he goes, oh, you have any VH3 stuff? And I said, yeah, I got VH3 stuff. You know? So we actually had a very nice several calls and he's supposed to come visit this summer. Um, and this is one of his action drawings that he did. This was the USS uh, Brain, which was a uh, Destroyer escort was hit by two kamikaze planes. And VH 3 was called out. They flew the uh, PDM uh, flying boat. And you see the guys in the water here. I'll get into this a little bit more in depth. And here he is on, I think it's either Saipan or Okinawa, and he's sketching. Always sketching. War ends, he comes back. Uh, and then, oh, this coming to the next slide, Brandon. Uh, <laughs> getting off track here. Uh, he always had had this interest in mural painting. Uh, the first prize he ever won as a student at Heron was the uh, Society of Bill Arts Architects in New York City. Uh, he won a for two years, consecutive years, he won one prize in mural painting, mural design. And I still have the bronze medals that they were given. Uh, but he had always had this, he liked big, he liked painting big things. And if you look at the scale of some of his artwork here, it's good size. It's, it's pretty, it's almost mural type painting. Uh, so I think that, you know, came from this tradition. He, he wins a competition to paint the murals. I have no idea if these still exist at Methodist Hospital in Indianapolis, but it was for the Children's Ward, the uh, Thomas Taggart Children's Ward. Uh, this is the solarium. You can see the glass uh, in the roof here. Uh, so he does this entire wall is done. And the figures that you see painted are life size. So that gives you an idea. You can see him right here standing, standing next to the mural. So this thing is massive. He also is invited to do uh, murals for J.K. Lilly's office at Eli Lilly Company, which had just been totally remodeled. And I gotta see if I can get this to animate. I found a 20-second film. J.K. Lilly in the office with the murals behind him. Uh, they were to, to depict the, what, the uh, Lilly empire around the world, how much Lilly pharmaceuticals were important to health all over the world. So uh, I thought that was a, a really cool little film, you know, pretty neat. Uh, 
So when he comes back to Indiana, and he, he's been here a little bit, but the, the quote at the top was from an artist friend of his uh, from California. And I think the quote was more like, well, Bob, what are you going to do? Go back to the hills of Indiana and bury yourself? It's kind of, you know, when I, when I first saw it, I go, wow, you know, he had all this fame going on in New York City. He was a white member of the, of the you know, Grand Central Gallery. It's, you know, why, why would he come back to Peru? You know, he had everything, his life was, was there now. Well, he felt deeply that because of all the success he had, he owed the town of Peru for his, his successes. So he comes back, and as I say here, he goes, yeah, I'm going to bury myself in work. I'm going to paint. I'm going to do great things. So he builds the house, which is still there. I'm going to buy it today over on Brunel Street. Uh, that was going to be his home and studio. Note there are two garage doors. One was for his Delage sports car, that he owned, which was a beautiful car, uh, which I have today. Uh, and the other one was for his Indian motorcycle. <laughs> and I have a picture of them both sitting out in front of this building, right next to each other, and he's taking a picture like, hey, this is my house, and this is my stuff. But, uh, you know, after traipsing around the globe with the Challenger Prize in World War II, he was ready to get grounded and back to work. And he meets my mom. And that's my mom. That's me. Which one? Right here. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. Yeah. I can't believe I was ever that small. Uh, but, you know, I just want to say something about my mom because it's Mother's Day. She was, she made everything.
I'm trying to think uh, what would be here very close to that. Um, but you notice that all of his other drawings are very flowing, they're very sculpted, they're very freedom, you know, almost lifelike looking. Now you're seeing stylized techniques, like the trees are stylized. The color is more subdued, it's the earth tone colors. He loved earth tone colors, but they're even, you know, more so here. Uh, my, one of my mentors uh, in Toronto home playing, uh, I stayed at his house uh, the other night in Indianapolis. He played with the Indianapolis Symphony for many years. And, uh, I gave him uh, a print of Daniel that I had made because he had written a composition uh, that featured Daniel as the inspiration for the piece of music. So for when he retired from the symphony, I had sent this to him. And, we were sitting discussing it the other night, and I said, well, I said, you know, really, you could say this is almost autobiographical because he maybe sees himself as, as Daniel, and the lions are all the critics, <laughs> <laughs> okay? <laughs> so it's quite possible. Uh, but I think his Gothic period really started late in the war, during the war. These are two surviving fighter pilots that he had picked up with, with BH-3. The ribs of the aircraft, you see, are reminiscent of a cathedral uh, vault in the ceiling or a flying buttress. And you can see that they're very glad to be here. And uh, I think it's a powerful image. And then you get into portraiture. <coughs> uh, we have the Wallach portraits here, which uh, I remember him painting both of those. But he looked at portraiture as a way also here, again, to document the service. Because he knew it was going away. He knew that the, the traveling service was going to end at some period. And he said, if I don't document it, it will be forgotten. So that became one of his missions. Uh, John Cadaro, this is much, in the, you can see it's very stylized. This is much in his Gothic style. That's 1949. In the middle, you have Gracie, and this is a massive canvas. This thing, I picked this thing up. It's like, I have to go like that. That's the width of it. And it's probably life size. You know, really, it's at least this tall. And it weighs a ton. Uh, but he did this in a very difficult medium called egg tempera. He actually had to make his own paint. Uh, I think there was what they call an eBay fix here. He had a thing about Gracie. I think he would have liked to maybe, <laughs> maybe had had a affair or something with her because she shows up in a lot of, of paintings and a lot of artwork. But I found some letters between them and she's very, oh, you're so funny, you're so cute, but you know, have a nice life. <laughs> 